do like a like a tier list of all the new cards <clears throat> honestly i think it's about time i think it's about time because every time you know i do kind of like initial impressions but i haven't been going back and kind of lumping all the cards into like tier list together after doing deck building and I, I i think this is it this is this is the first we're gonna start doing this every every expansion and honestly i'm looking God, guys 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 hang on hang on hang on we'll we'll get to Udi. okay you know like <laughs> i agree i agree all right <clears throat> so it's tier list time let's get into it we're gonna rate all the new cards all right since I've got to do this for YouTube, let me get into my like my YouTube persona mind space. Okay. Ring the bell. Smash that like button. Don't forget to follow. Okay. I'm there. I'm okay. Okay. I'm ready. All right, guys. Here we go. The tier list, all 40, I made that number up. It's about 40. All 40 new cards being put on this tier list from the new expansion after I've had time to, of course, like kind of build around with these cards and, you know, theory craft what decks we're gonna run them in, right? This isn't just initial impressions. We're gonna be talking about like how to use these cards and why these cards are a little bit better or a little bit worse than you might think. You know, uh, before we get into it, a couple ground rules that I'd like to lay down. Rule one, cards are being judged by a mix of factors, right? The ability to fit into ranked decks, the ability to fit into tournament decks, and the versatility of these cards in general, right? If a card is able to hit many good decks, then it's going to get extra points compared to if it hits only one or two pretty good decks. Uh, also, this is evaluating main decking the card right so this is not an evaluation of a uh, card's value if you're getting it generated randomly a lot of cards are actually good uh to get randomly or as a champ spell but we're just talking about whether i want to put this card in my deck and rule three keep in mind this is assuming the, the whole point of this is assuming like deck building potential right so it's less about the kind of like how bad a card would be if you were forced to run it but meaning that you have to have a reason to run the card if that makes sense right so if there's just a better version of this card out there that you'll kind of always run instead and they're in like the same region and everything then i'm gonna rate that card pretty low because why would you play it right all right now of course keep in mind i'm also evaluating this on the basis of a long-term metagame the first week or two of the patch uh, is going to be really wild. It's going to be a lot of different things. Uh, and, you know, we'll have to see exactly how it all shapes out. But don't come in the comments like, you know, like a week into the balance patch and being like, oh, swim teehee, you were so wrong. Do that like two and a half weeks. Like, I mean, do that. Don't get me wrong. Like, it, you know, this is pure speculation. I don't know shit about these guys. I have no idea what's going to be good. And I'm definitely going to be very wrong about at least one of these cards. But, like, you know, at least. Give, give it like two or three weeks let you know and, and then call me wrong because you know i will be but when i am all right anyway that's uh that's it those are the rules who's ready anyway let's get started guys with grandfather Faye. we're gonna be going in order of the reveals here so grandfather Faye is a two mana one two fey bandle ioni card when i'm summoned create a hundred owl cat in hand when you summon another fey grant it plus one plus zero uh and this card is gonna go straight to future potential tier which i guess is d right like eh, it's, it's some tier i don't i don't really believe in letter grades uh, i i didn't really do well in school and i don't really want to make anyone feel bad about any sort of uh, letter that they have so i'll call grandfather fey future potential uh i tried building around with a fey deck uh, or two and there's a lot of ways to build that archetype but it ends up being better in different forms like yordles and arms wants to kind of like swarm and slam the board tristana stuff is pretty good but usually you don't want to be in like a full face synergy when that happens grandfather fey is like pretty solid um but i don't think it actually has a home right off the bat <clears throat> blast cone seedling a two mana two two Fey that uh, on play gives barrier or impact um and this one is actually gonna go straight to uh 
please get out of my deck tier. Uh, this card is no good, unfortunately, from a competitive standpoint, as far as, I mean, my predictions go. And again, I'm going to be wrong about some of these. Maybe, maybe it's Blast Cone. Maybe, maybe weeks from now, we'll be, we'll be sitting in terror as Blast Cone just dominates every facet of the metagame. And we'll all be laughing at how someone was wrong. But Blast Cone Seedling does not look so hot here. Even in a potential Fey deck, there's already a lot of ways of getting, like, you know, th there's already a lot of ways of having enough like two mana phase. There's already good access to Ionia as a second region for stuff like Beandle Tree. But the difference between Seedling and Fey in Grandfather Fey is that like even in a future Fey deck, I don't think you're really running Seedling. Next up though, we got Gleaming Lantern. Gleaming Lantern is going to go straight to great card in certain decks. Uh, Gleaming Lantern is a great card. In certain decks uh it's a three mana three three and each round of the first fey you play costs two less of course it's a fey itself which means it can discount the another copy of itself meaning the second copy you play of it if it's the first fey is going to be a one mana three three um additionally the way this card works is that even though it's the first fey you play that round we do have developer confirmation that it will discount the second unit you play if the gleaming lantern was the first unit you played on the board which means on turn three you can play Gleaming Lantern, followed by a two mana Fey that gets discounted. It also discounts attaches because it's a it, it goes off of play effects and not summons, right? So Gleaming Lantern is really, really solid. Um, I'm actually not sure exactly how many decks it'll hit right now. I don't expect it to be just like, you know, super auto include or anything nutty, but it's a solid card. Some Bandle Swarm decks are definitely going to be trying to splash it in and seeing the experimentation. Um, still a little bit held back by, you know, needing the Fey archetype and Fey cards being a little bit weak for the moment in terms of like where they're able to apply, but very, very solid here. Okay, uh, next up we've got fey aid and fey sprout um and these two additionally are actually just going to go into the future potential category uh just the same for pretty much the same reasons they're kind of like fey build around cards not too much to talk about with these ones um the the random fey that you're getting off the manifest apart from the phase that we have in today's reveals the, the new expansion the six phase in the game that this can pull from are um the flower child picks loping telescope tasty fey folk swole squirrel and furious fey folk damn i'm good that was all off the top of my head um i actually i no i i, I read i i have a note here that <laughs> i actually read it off a note but then like halfway through i made sure my eyes wandered so it looked like i was no no it was it was scripted i didn't memorize that at all um but yeah no th these cards are all right like face sprout is not a bad card but there's just not too much of a reason to run it outside of like a face energy deck which doesn't really work yet however yordle portal on the other hand is very good uh yordle portal is a card that i didn't really think too much of this card is a three mana burst to play it you have to discard one uh but you manifest a yordle that costs three or less and summon it now it's a summon it doesn't go it doesn't hit play effects so if you choose a card like Conchologist or Petty Officer, uh, you're not going to get those play effects at all, which is a little bit unfortunate. But there's still a lot of good cards for this to grab, most notably cards like Fuzzy Caretaker cards, like, you know, Trevor Snooze Bottom, even, you know, this new card, Hothead, is a three mana Yordle, you know, Babbling Balladeers. Again, these are all just off the top of my head. I'm not, you know, I don't have like a, like a script memorized or anything like that, but the reason why yordle portal is actually going to be in great card in certain decks which i think is going to surprise a lot of you guys right like i see some people in chat that are like what's up with that um yordle portal i think is going to be very good in a yordles and arms deck especially those running flame chompers right the biggest thing about this card that makes it good is that it has a deck that it is basically perfect in already right and i think that that's one of the most important things when we're evaluating like cards potential and deck building is that a card might look like yordle portal is bad in a vacuum like that's very much true but in a card like in a deck like yordles and arms having a burst speed developers is really nice you need to discard targets for that deck anyway so because you're running flame chompers and boom baboon for more flame chompers so this card is a solid way of getting those discard targets and looking through the list of yordles there's actually enough at three mana or less that you're going to be able to get solid value from off of a burst speed developer right being able to play this card before an attack is actually really strong i don't expect it to hit even any real other decks than that but 
all it needs to hit is like one good deck and i think that deck will make yordle portal good single-handedly right so that's uh that's kind of how we're evaluating cards right because again the card isn't great in a vacuum but it is able to fit into a deck that is that's the most important thing here uh next up spirit portal this one uh we're skipping it's uh no good spirit portal is uh no good i actually forgot this card existed when, when we were setting up this tier list i yeah i don't know i don't know how that happened heroic refrain uh, is actually gonna go straight into this card i um heroic refrain is a card that i kind of thought at first was kind of bad you know three mana burst give two allies plus two plus one um and basically this card i thought at first I, I compared it to you know uh together we stand we stand together what's it called yeah we stand together the targon one um because of course they do pretty similar things this one's in bandal and it's plus two plus one instead of you know uh the plus one plus two um and the targon one ended up being really underwhelming even in like pantheon decks but in reality there, there's a couple things like targon doesn't really need that kind of card pantheon decks already have kind of too many spells and not enough units not enough of a reliable time having two units for buff targets they don't need more combat tricks bandle city is really light on combat tricks and wouldn't mind some this card has a more offense oriented stat line which makes it good for like bandle swarm decks trying to push damage in um again yordles and arms style decks could definitely definitely use like one or two copies of this card like this card is no cap almost almost a consideration for the for great card in certain decks but I, I i think it's just like a solid card people will experiment like one or two copies of this card in some decks and i wouldn't be surprised if it hit any of those um all right okay <clears throat> next up <laughs> So we got to pick up the speed, homie. Yeah, I know, I know. So for those of you guys who don't know, I'm currently doing this tier list in the time before we have access to the day day early expansion, right? So like as I'm recording this, there's 30 minutes left. There's 25 minutes left, but I have 25 minutes to finish this video uh, just on my end, unedited, before we gain access to the new patch and I'm gonna have to stop. So I do, you, you guys gotta keep me on track because I'm rambly. I don't know if you guys know that about me. Anyway, next up, we've got transposition. I think transposition is easy future potential. Um, Honestly, future potential is kind of a cop-out answer because it's like, kind of like the I can't be wrong category could have future potential maybe not it's like the card you know I'm not wrong if the card never see plays and I'm not wrong if the card in the future sees play so future potential baby um transposition I don't think is going to see play right away uh it is a four mana fast bandle spell recall an ally the next ally you play this round with equal or less cost cost zero instead there's a lot of cute things you can do with this um you can build it with some kinds of meme combos about cheating things out early you know there's this memes of like abominable snowbone what, what is it called abominable guardian or something um the the big yeti thing the eight mana one that you can like cheat it out early on like turn three and then transposition it on turn four into like i don't know a trend or something it, like it, th there's definitely some meme combos with it um and it's also a really nice bandle tool for just protecting things right like protecting Heim like heimerdinger cephalopod was talking about like maybe running like a heimer bandle skewed deck um off of the back of this but i don't see it hitting decks right away all right <clears throat> next up we've got hothead um <laughs> this might actually surprise some of you guys um i will actually be putting hothead in the uh in the please get out of my deck tier so i think personally when it comes to hothead uh this is a good example of like how i'm doing this tier list this card isn't terrible but i don't think there's any reason to run it even in the future um a lot of things about hothead of course being a three mana four two uh shreeman splash yordle when you attack grants the top champion in a deck plus one plus one and a random keyword right the problem with hothead is that there's just simply not really a reason to run it even in the future right he can be ran in mod shreem <laughs> uh yeah that's true um but a, a big issue with hothead like people are talking about entreat memes um you should know entreat doesn't draw the top champion in your deck entreat in any similar thing anything that draws a champion from your deck like golden ambassador 2 will draw a random champion from your deck not the top champion from your deck so even like those kinds of memes uh, won't really be able to reliably do much with that right 
I think Hothead to me, I, again, this is a card that is going to be great to get off of Yordle Portal. It's a three mana Yordle. Like, it's going to be amazing. But in terms of main decking the card, we already have Shreema cards. Uh, there's just not really a reason. Oh, God, I've got 20 minutes left. Yeah, this is not even going to be close. All right, all right, all right. Speed run time, speed run time. Okay, Yumi. I'm putting Yumi in future potential. Um, Yumi is a card that's not really going to be... It, it, she requires a very specific setup. You want to play an early unit. Uh, that's going to be able to grow with her um, on turn two or three, right? So those are going to be cards like Zed, maybe cards that have like good keywords like Elusive, Fizz she's pretty good on, uh, and actually surprisingly Ruthless Raider is a really, really good tool for her. Um, Yumi is a card that isn't going to see, I think, competitive play right away. Um, and in the future, I think she actually does have potential. So she requires a very, very specific uh set of tools like a very specific card to go inside to really make it worth it i think like off of a buff like if she was easier to level up and get the spell shield she would probably be better um next up prowling projectile not really a reason to run this card it's kind of like a worse version of pokey stick since it can't target the nexus assistant librarian however is actually really good we're going to call that a great card in certain decks uh there's a lot of combos you can do with a two mana two two faded in bandle that has nexus strike it's a really good target for riven blades i've actually built a deck uh one of the two decks that i'll be playing right at the start of the expansion is actually using assistant librarian so i'm really excited to mess around with this card it's also a great target for stuff like uh some Porks map granting an elusive which is an underrated card in general scarlet lee climber gonna go into this card i um i think this card is actually maybe a little bit underrated it's not going to be like great or carry decks um but i did build out uh you know a kind of like riven style uh bandle deck and if you're running like riven targon or riven bandle you could definitely run scholarly climber it's actually a really really perfect stat line and body to pick up the blade of the exile um i don't expect it to be making big waves but it's actually it's actually pretty solid friendship Great card in certain decks. Friendship is a four mana burst, and it's either a spell shield or barrier, and that's amazing flexibility. Uh, you know, you compare it to like Bastion, you don't really need the grant on the spell shield in Bastion or really the plus one plus one. And the flexibility for barrier makes this card really, really nice. It's not gonna be like an auto include or anything like that, but it'll be a useful tool. You'll sometimes put one or two in the list. Rainbow Fish, uh, of course, we get into the other attached cards now. I think Rainbow Fish goes into the Ite category. Um, ultimately, this card has good, you know, it, it's an elusive plus two plus one when you attach it to something at four mana. And it's a little bit awkward to really use this effectively. Elusive is a keyword that really wants to go wide on a board and not tall, right? People are always trying to buff their elusives. Uh, keywords like overwhelms are ones that you want to just like buff and stuff. Um, but elusives don't really do that well because there's always going to be elusive jump blockers in the metagame, like always from now on uh rainbow fish is decent i might experiment with it a little bit it's you know got decent stats and you know you will be able to do some cheeky blows with it but i don't think it is the best attached card in fact i think the best attached card might be papercraft dragon yeah so papercraft dragon i'm putting as great card this this, this card's nuts i i love papercraft dragon this card it's insane so when i first saw it i wasn't thinking too much of it right five mana double attack two two double attack is kind of an overrated keyword in my opinion um because a lot of people underestimate how much you need to do with double attack to make it do anything at all you need to you need to have the unit have overwhelm that's a must for double attack to even do anything at all um and you need ways of being able to protect the unit but honestly that's pretty easy and because papercraft dragon gives plus two plus two as its base stat line and it effectively makes its component parts uh unhushable and untransformable which is a really funny interaction if you guys didn't know when an attach unit when, when the base unit gets silenced or transformed the attach unit stat line and keywords still remain right so if they mini morph my main unit my papercraft dragon will still be giving it a five five double attack right which is really really funny especially when i turn around and use like might or absolver on them right so paper craft dragon uh is really solid i've built two decks that i'll be playing today and those are like i've built one with ruin runner oh yeah ruin runner's back baby paper craft dragon ruin runner is gonna be disgusting um and i've built one with like kind of like fizz riven style uh yeah paper craft dragon i love this card super good Qu quick quill as well 
Uh, I actually think Quick Quill is more of an eight card, honestly. I, I, am I am I crazy? This one th this one I'm actually undecided about, honestly. I think Quick Quill is really is really solid, but I don't know if it actually has a much of a home right off the bat. Like as much as this card should be better than Papercraft Dragon, this is, <laughs> you're crazy, but move on. Uh, I, I I think I think it does have to be too good. I I I think Quick Coil is a very good card. You can't just put it auto include in Bandle. Um, but overall, it'll it'll have a home here. Mushroom Ring, however, not really worth running. Same with Petrocyte Stag. Um, a couple of these effects just don't really do too much right off the bat. Like you can think about cute ways of using Petrocyte Stag, but it's basically just kind of a worse gen, even in like Fiora style decks. Um, <clears throat> Duran Architect though is actually pretty solid. Uh, like I, I, this is the kind of card that I might put in future potential because it's got meme value because it's the only card in the game that can grant something or give something formidable. You can use this with, of course, the combos are like battering ram or is the big joke with this card that you just like slap this on a battering ram attack and go to town, which is pretty funny. <laughs> um and we'll have to see how it all plays out uh durand sculptor is gonna be i think just a solid card you're not gonna do anything crazy with this one i think the most potential of this card is probably with mf scouts um and in that deck i expect it to have at least uh experimentation if not a home but probably not going to be hitting too many other decks you might run it in some galio stuff long term protege as well um protege is just kind of hitting some of the same spots probably wouldn't run it in MF and misfortune maybe some like fiora hybrid kind of decks and some galio decks but it's not going to be really core or necessary in either um petrocyte broadwing however is gonna be in jam this shit here petrocyte broadwing is crazy it's effectively a two mana three three challenger it does have a bit of a downside on top of that and you know i mean i'm not gonna say it's gonna hit every single demacia deck of all time like you probably wouldn't run this in scouts i guess but like this card's really good you'll run this in a lot of decks like you, th this card is quite crazy um yeah no it, it's just insanely efficient it works really well with a lot of the health buffs of course it'll be in like galio stuff just really solid uh petrocyte hound is close i actually think this one is just i um, I might be wrong about this one. I'm, I'm kind of between great card and I, um, like, you know, I, I, I know like Seth was saying, like he, he likes running it a lot in like those early decks. I think even in a Galio deck, you don't really need to run this card, um, but it'll see experimentation and it'll be close. It's not like completely necessary or like core to that, to that card, to that deck or anything like that, but solid nonetheless. Uh, and I, I'd probably say the same thing about Winds of War. Uh, this card will definitely see some play. It's a very specific kind of card, right? I don't think you can run this in like Fiora decks, for example. The fast speed is a little bit too important to her. Uh, you would run this in a Galio deck. Um, I'm honestly not sure how important this card would be in a Galio deck. I, th I think for the most part, it's got pretty limited ways of using it, but definitely not horrible. And then we've got Gorlith the Unscalable, right? So Gorlith the Unscalable is, to me, kind of like between future potential, but honestly, it might even start seeing play right away. The fact that it can heal your Nexus at unit speed is really great. Um, and it definitely does have some meme concepts. Uh, I think I would actually put this card in I. Like, not only is this, does it have future potential, but you can, people will be experimenting with ways of using it right now. And it has a really, really unique effect. So I'm very happy with Gorlith. There's memes with like, you know, you can <clears throat> you can do like Ledros concurrent timelines transforming into Gorlith, uh, which obviously doesn't mean main deck in Gorlith, but that's a funny way to do a 20 damage kill combo because concurrent timelines will bypass the summit effect. So it'll always have 10 attack. That's effectively unblockable. Ledros will take them to 10. So that's funny. You can discount your Gorlith with like Matron stuff and Oblivious Islander kind of stuff for like kill combos and like healing yourself. There's definitely a lot of experimentation behind this card and the fact that it can just like potentially heal your nexus right off the bat is super cool it's also really funny that this card can get your nexus to integer overflow because for some reason you can just use like karma donna dusk uh redoubled valor go get it combos to make this card have effectively as much health as you could possibly want and we have confirmed by the devs that gorlith can set your nexus health above 20 so you can literally get your nexus health to integer overflow which is hilarious <laughs> like that's crazy 
then we've got mountain drake mountain drake definitely fits into this card Ike category it's not terrible um for sure like some people are saying like mountain drake will never see play and honestly i don't love mountain drake it's a card that you basically have to overwhelm for it to be good even in these kinds of decks that are running a lot of the you know the the plus health the uh formidable archetype you there's not really a reason to run mountain drake over something like screeching dragon unless you are giving this card overwhelm because the main point is it's just getting a crazy amount of attack too right um, and I think like people are going to overbuild for these formidable cards formidable is a keyword that you're going to want to use like Broadwing and you're going to want to use um, Galio as the finisher and like maybe one or two more of the support cards but for the most part you don't need a very divergent deck build you don't need to just click all the formidables in um, at least that's kind of like how I'm seeing it right now okay 10 minutes left i'm 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 making pace i'm making pace shield of durand definitely a great card in certain decks um super easy this card is hot it's not an auto jam uh believe me this card this card's not an auto jam it's good but three men is a lot for a combat trick and demacia does have a lot of good combat tricks shield of durand is amazing in fiora decks it is a card that is going to be very good in you know all of this like galio style decks people are talking about you know maybe running it in misfortune scouts uh possibly to keep misfortune alive not a super believer there um i do think people are probably going to overuse this card right away uh off the bat like it's a good card but there's a lot of you guys that just want me to put it in jam this shit, and i don't think i can uh it's 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 fairly limited in the decks you can use it in but it's very good in those decks and then we've got Galio. Galio is also really solid in certain decks. Uh, you won't be able to put him everywhere. I like to compare Galio to Tiana Crown Guard. Uh, he's basically a better version of that card, just like a big drop fat unit with a rally attached to it, right? Like Galio's multi rally is never really going to matter. The thing about like people talk about like Katarina and stuff and like infinite rallies, the whole point of rallying is you only really need one rally, right? Like pretty much. So yeah no he, he's a big rally on a stick and that's good um but he will be pretty easy to enable i think people will get baited initially by building these kind of like formidable decks around him when they don't really need that many i mean to level up galio right so galio has eight health and he requires 25 total unit health on board to level up and when you play him he gives plus three health to all the units that you currently have on board which totals nine if you have three units which makes 17. so all you need to have galio level up is either three units on board already that have a combined health total of eight so that would be like three health three health and two health or two units on board that have a combined health total of 11 so that would be like five health and six health right which is a lot easier than i think a lot of people think now those units do have to survive until the end of turn because it is round end but that's still like mathematically like you don't need to run all these like high health formidable units to get galio to level up at least as far as i see it like galio is gonna be a pretty non-committal like top end to a deck uh to make galio really good you might just need more sources of overwhelm and so a lot of decks running galio are definitely gonna run like targon or maybe freljord then we've got tusk speaker uh tusk speaker is great tusk speaker is amazing this card will revolutionize at least a couple decks i think that like plunder decks like gangplank sejuani will single-handedly get out of allegiance for the sake of tusk speaker uh i think that you know people are talking about running this card in like you know kind of like fraljord swain style decks or maybe some kinds of versions of like vlad scargrounds okay not for, sorry not vlad is that it listen it's good at gangplank sejuani it's so bad i actually think this card's i um th there's a lot of benefits of this card um i might be overrating this card ultimately i think it fits into plunder decks and i don't know how well it'll fit into other things we will see but i personally have faith that this card will find places in those decks you got you have eight minutes you have eight minutes left swim hurry up yeah yeah guys i've got plenty of guys you guys think i'm running low on time but look at the remaining cards it's all the udyrs that you think these cards are gonna take me long you <laughs> uh that's funny okay bone skewer all right so bone Ske bone skewer sorry bone scryer bone scryer uh is i you know i don't think it's gonna empower anything crazy it's a very unique card and i think people will run it in like you know vlad style scargrounds deck if there's enough enough copium i do think vlad scargrounds is kind of underrated but bone scryer doesn't really give it what it needs uh it's it's a very powerful card that doesn't really have a home yet right so if like vlad scargrounds was a better archetype this card would be nuts uh and if it didn't exist this card would also not exist so you could argue it almost doesn't exist and yeah it doesn't 
Then we've got Mammoth Shaman. Mammoth Shaman, I think, is actually pretty good. Um, in certain decks, again, the biggest problem with Bone Scryer, Mammoth Shaman, and Murkwolf Shaman is they really just don't have a home in that way, right? Like they're trying to fit into you know the the kind of like Vlad Scargrounds style decks, uh, and I don't think they're really going to be that efficient at it. I think I would say that Mammoth Shaman, out of the three of them, has the most potential. Uh, this card does get pretty scary pretty fast and in, in any sort of like Freljord Overwhelm decks this will be a threat like the old style Alpha Wad Claw kinds of decks um, I'm actually hesitating this this one I could even consider being a great card in certain decks I think I might actually put it here I think this card is actually pretty effective but the state of Freljord right now is a little bit awkward I think Murkwolf Shaman is a little bit worse so I'll put this one in this card I um all right, next up, Wrath of the Freljord is definitely going to be a great card in certain decks. 8 mana, 8 8 Overwhelm is kind of the main conceit of this card, sort of like a Captain Fraun with a dim finisher based on its text rather than based on giving you decimates in hand. Uh, this card will make sense in like Targon's Peak style decks, any decks that are like going to be running like Freljord and looking to stall out the game and looking for like a game closer on those turns. You would run it in like Gangplank Sejuani if that deck didn't already have something like, you know, Dreadway, which would be better. But Wrath of the Freljord is a great tool. People will experiment this card with a lot. Like, this is one of the best cards that we're seeing in this expansion for sure shaman's call shaman's call is ooh. i would i actually oh man i would probably put this one in this card's eye um it's it's a little bit lower than vulpine wanderer which i'll, I'll, I'll compare at the same time because we have five minutes left and uh vulpine wanderer is gonna go very well into a lot of decks that are looking for uh the versatility that this card provides right like any deck that wants overwhelm is gonna use vulpine wanderer this card is like no cap almost in jam this sh it's very very good but still a little limited just because there's not that much versatility that the stances have um then hiara all seer personally not too much of a believer in hiara all seer i think it'll be you know it, it, it'll be kind of worse than the shamans because it requires a little bit of additional synergy i think that if you're going for like big overwhelm mammoth shaman actually has a bit more potential honestly mammoth mammoth shaman i'm sorry i'm gonna have to demote this to this card's eye i i I just can't make it a great card in certain decks. That's too much Kofium. Spirits Unleashed, however, is not going to be great. I mean, it's just it, one of the problems with Udir is that this is his champ spell. Um, and Udir, I am going to be putting in future potential. Uh, I, I know that Udir is not good. Uh, well, I've talked about it a lot. I don't think this card is great, but I'm not going to say it, he, he's not like F tier because, I mean, he's still a champion. He still does something unique. He's still a card that in a certain deck can be built around in a solid way right like with a tiny bit more support or additional cards that like make you want to play this Freljord thing he does something very unique for Freljord which is offer you card draw right like imagine a Demacia Freljord deck that wants to strike a lot and keep units alive right the big problem with Demacia Freljord as a region combination is that they've never really had a way to generate value before they don't have draw right Re certain region combinations in Legends of Runeterra are almost fundamentally non-competitive just by the nature of how the two different regions work together right because like for example Freljord Demacia not having draw is a fatal flaw of the deck combination and udir is a card that fits into demacia pretty well and actually solves that so in certain decks in the future i think udir does have potential i don't think he's going to be great right away as we talked about um but you know let's move on because we have literally three minutes left okay chief nanotech chief nanotech uh, definitely going to fit into the future potential category this is the three mana three three that gives you an ally uh gives every ally plus one plus one when it transforms which is really good in like kind of all in concurrent timelines memes of course it works with nara every single turn because nara is potentially transforming like every other turn which is really nice and the, the stat buffs will stack. It's got a solid body right off the bat, but there's just not enough transforms right away. And even in a transform deck, you're not really priced into running nano attack based off the transforms we already have in the game. Because the transforms we already have in the game, as far as we've seen, are transforms that are all kind of like giving you plus stats. And nano attack doesn't really want to give stats to units that already have a lot of stats. We look to cards like Bits of Lizard, cards like Spotted Toad, and cards like TD Dactyl that already just have a lot of stats and don't really need more. Bitsy Lizard is going to go into the this card Ike category. I'm not a big believer in Bitsy Lizard. I think that the two mana drop is a, a, a little bit contested, and the idea of putting value into 
future rounds by paying mana now isn't great like the fact that you have to open attack on turn two just to be able to play this on turn three as a three four after using the mana on turn two isn't amazing and a lot of people overrate cards that have that quality of like oh you spend the mana now and you get the value next turn spotted toad however is actually going to be very good I, I like spotted toad as well as teeny dactyl i think these cards are both very solid um i would definitely mess around running them in a lot of decks i think teeny dactyl is going to be good in any sort of uh burn style like ping city deck and spotted toad is a pretty well-rounded card in general it's gonna do well into certain metas and like a kind of like mid-rangey control bandle city play style i don't know if a deck like that really exists yet but at the very least it's a very unique card and at a very high power level then we've got primal strength this card goes straight into the please get out of my deck category it's a four mana flame spitter basically that gives two extra health but that's not worth paying the additional four mana for mini t however i will actually put mini t in a great card in certain decks this card this might surprise you guys a little bit mini t is not a card that uh, you you can compare to mini morph mini morph and mini t do basically completely different things mini morph is a card that is designed to shut down specific strategies by being able to interact at burst speed by being completely undisruptible and by being able to be played in the middle of the turn right so the cards you're trying to counter with mini morph are cards like scion cards like lee sin cards like you know fiora or whatever and mini t is a completely different card i think a lot of people conflate these uh mini t is a card that's just trying to like control out the game and give you like onboard value for an alternate win condition sort of like viego so it's like a bandle city deck where you're stalling and ramping and just like slapping a mini t on the board and like attritioning the opponent out it's a good card but it's not even it's not even countering even the same kinds of things as mini morph all right one minute left wallop wallop is a decent card i would put this card straight up in Ike category i think that people might experiment with it have bandle city having access to an open attack punisher is really nice in the form of a fast speed stun this card is going to be really really great to have off of a nar spell like double drawing nar in bandle tree decks is going to be great uh and then finally we've got nar himself which goes straight into jam the shit that's so easy okay so nar is absolutely nuts you are going to be seeing this card in most bandle city decks not everyone don't get me wrong even though petrosite broadwing and nar are both jam this shit, you're not going to see these cards as a three of in literally every single bandle city deck right it's it, it's just not going to happen um but nar is still very good you're gonna see him in probably most of them the ability to gain the reliable value off of the pokey sticks is gonna be really really good the <laughs> level up just putting like additional uh ba basically pressure on the opponent's board with the vulnerable and the overwhelm and just the sheer stats that he gets for free is great and he's just got like a really good floor for value right like even when he gets removed he's just solid right so you're gonna slap this boy in a lot of failure decks and a lot of bandle decks you don't really have to build around him very much you just have to just kind of like slap him in and see what happens all right that's it i finished the tier list we're done the tier list has finished we have rated all 40 something of the new cards of the expansion and now we are gonna get into the actual expansion so if you're watching this on youtube well you know i i happen to be streaming the expansion right now because there's an event where streamers have like day one early access so if you want to check out me playing some of these new decks you can hit it up and uh head over to the to the stream it's in the pinned comment if you want to join all right see you there